Okay, here we are. Story time. And let me get the camera adjusted a little better. Uh, okay. Good evening, boys and girls. Um, what a what a blessing to be back again. We hope uh, hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, we miss your faces. We can't wait to see you. We've seen some of you, and uh, that's always a joy. And we can't wait till we can be back together. And it sounds like, according to the news today, it sounds like it's going to be very, very soon. So we're very thankful for that. Well, Miss Margaret and I have a new story for you tonight. It won't be a, a long story. We're going to just do one chapter each week rather than try to squeeze in two chapters like we've been doing. Um, but this is, um, this is a new story, and we've put the pictures to this story on the computer. So we're going to do this a little differently tonight. Instead of looking at our faces <laughs> for the whole story, um, we put all the pictures on the computer uh, so that you can see them better. And, um, and so we're going to turn the camera around right now. You won't see us, but you'll we'll be here. Us. You'll hear us, but you'll be looking at the uh, pictures uh, on the computer. All right. Okay, let's see. How do we turn this around? Yeah. Oh, there it is. It worked. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this week's uh, story is uh, called T-Fam, the witch doctor's daughter. And our story takes place in the country of Haiti. And I know most of you boys and girls, at least those of you that are part of our church, have certainly heard of Haiti because we have missionaries working there. I've uh, been there many years. They're our dear friends. And uh, this is Maurice and Gerda Lapierre and um, their children, uh, Paul. I can actually, I got a pointer. How about that? There's Paul and there's David. Uh, and we love these dear missionaries um, very dearly. How did we get this notice up on the, uh, okay. I don't know. There's a, I don't know. Okay, someone did that? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, I don't know how I did that. I thought I turned my notifications off. <laughs> but, all right, anyway, uh, this is Maurice and Gerda Lapierre. Uh, we've known Maurice for almost 20 years, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, actually. Um, and we've been there many times to his country to visit. Um, even Margaret's been there, and some of, uh, some of your dads have been there. Some of the men in the church have gone with us on those mission trips. And I want to just tell you just a, t a little bit about Haiti for some of you that may not remember. But Haiti is a, not a very easy place to be a missionary. The people there are very, very poor. Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the whole world. And uh, the people are also very superstitious. The religion in Haiti is voodoo. And that means uh, that the people there mostly worship evil spirits and ask evil spirits for help. They worship the devil. Uh, they don't have pastors, but instead they have witch doctors. And these witch doctors talk to evil spirits and put curses on people, do all kinds of bad things, and they have a lot of power. And the people are uh, often very afraid of the witch doctors because they believe that they have real power. Um, and when the people want something good to happen to them, they can buy a potion or a charm, a voodoo charm from one of these witch doctors, and uh, these things are supposed to bring them good luck or keep bad things from happening to them. And so the witch doctors make a lot of money and keep the people in subjection by, um, by selling them these, these charms. So our story takes place in the land of in the land of Haiti and this story is called Tifam. And some of you might remember this story because it's been around for a long time. In fact, I think I remember hearing this story when I was a kid in Sunday school. So it's a very well-known story, but it's a very exciting story and it's about a little girl. Uh we don't know exactly how old she was, but from the story it seems like she's about 9 years old or 10 years old. Um, and, uh, and so this is the story, and her father was a witch doctor, so this is the story of Tifam, the witch doctor's daughter, and our story begins early one morning in the mountains of Haiti. The sun was coming up over the mountain in Haiti. T 
T-Fam rolled up the, the banana leaf mat that was her bed. She carried it out into the sun and set it against the side of her two-room mud house. T-Fam called Mama Oristel, T-Fam's mother. We must dig up the rest of the sweet potatoes for market tomorrow. Go cut some banana leaves to line the inside of the baskets. Getting banana leaves and digging up sweet potatoes is hard work, but T-Fam was very excited because she remembered her mama's promise. Her mama had promised her that if they earned enough money from selling sweet potatoes, the T-Fam could have a new dress. And so T-Fam picked up her big knife and ran to the banana trees. T-Fam, a quiet voice called. A girl about her age walked toward her. Oh, Maria, guess what I'm going to get? A new dress with words on it. Maria was confused. Words? But you won't be able to read them, T-Fam. But I'm going to learn to read. Really? Will you teach me? Sure, said Marie. My family's going to get something new, too. Let me guess. A new voodoo charm from my father? Marie shook her head. We're not going to buy any more voodoo charms. <gasps> T-Fam clutched the garlic voodoo charm hanging around her neck. Not buy any more voodoo charms, she gasped. But maybe your house will burn down. Maybe, maybe you'll get sick. Marie, aren't you afraid? No, Marie said confidently. We're Christians now. We're trusting the Lord Jesus to take care of us, just like Victor said. Don't believe him. He tells lies. No, he doesn't. The missionaries taught Victor the truth from God's book, the Bible, Marie said quietly. After we go to market, we're going to buy a Bible from the missionaries. No, no, don't go to the missionaries, Marie. One day you might need my father's voodoo, and he won't help you if you believe in the missionaries' God. Marie shook her head. Jesus is stronger than your father's voodoo, T-Fam, Marie said. T-Fam was shocked. She ran to her mother, who was standing beside the baskets of sweet potatoes. Mama, Mama, Marie's family won't buy any more voodoo charms. They're Christians. Early the next morning, T-Fam balanced a basket full of sweet potatoes on her head. Come, come, we must get to market, her mother said as she picked up the other basket. Why hurry, thought T-Fam, as she watched her father go toward his voodoo temple. The voodoo temple was where he did his magic and worshipped evil spirits. He looked fierce in his red shirt. T-Fam trembled. What magic would he do today, she thought. Would he make the evil spirits do something awful, to Marie's family because they believed in the missionary's God? Go along, said her mother, pushing T-Fam ahead of her. They started up the mountain trail that led out of the valley. Imagine what it would be like to walk up a steep mountain trail while balancing a basket of potatoes on your head. Do you think you could do that? Well, I don't think I could. Well, when they reached the highest point, T-Fam looked back. The house farthest away was Marie's. Would the spirits burn her house? T-Fam was worried. Frightened, T-Fam ran to catch up with her mother and then looked at her mom in surprise. Mama, stop! Your charm is lost. No, it's not lost, her mother said. The string broke this morning and I left it off. Nothing it will happen. Oh, yes, it will, T-Fam cried, holding her own charm tightly in her hand. At the market, T-Fam and her mother stopped in front of a man buying and selling sweet potatoes. Her mother put both baskets in front of him. The man pushed aside the banana leaves in the larger basket and looked at the sweet potatoes carefully. Suddenly, he dumped them on the ground. Worms, nothing but worms. I'll only give you 35 cents, he said. T-Fam's mother took the money and picked up the empty basket and T-Fam's basket, which was still full. 
she led Tfam to an open place and set the baskets down. Sit here, Tfam. I will go buy some beans and sugar. Then we will try to sell the sweet potatoes that are left. Tfam sat down by the baskets. Soon she saw a man approaching. Are your sweet potatoes for sale? He asked with a strong voice. Ye yes, Tfam said, looking up at the smiling man. They're one dollar and twenty-five cents. Oh, that's too much, he grinned. But I need them for Granny Holdeman today, so I'll pay you thirty-five cents. I don't know any Granny Holdeman, T-Fam stood up, but, but I worked hard, and I carried them a long way. The price is 40 cents. All right, he grinned again. Here's the 40 cents. T-Fam looked at the money in her hand with excitement. Was it enough for a dress, one with words? T-Fam saw her mother coming. Mama, look. T-Fam opened her hand. See, 40 cents. Oh, her mother was so excited. She said, maybe now you'll have your dress. Tfam pulled her mother to a stall there at the market where dresses were hanging. They were dresses made out of feed sacks. She pointed to one with English words. It's 75 cents, said the old man. Well, I don't have 75 cents, said Tfam's mother. I'll give you 20 cents. Well, the man shrugged. Fifty cents and not a penny cheaper. Make it thirty cents and I'll take it. See how my little daughter needs a new dress? Never, the man put the dress back on the rack. Tfam's eyes filled with tears. See what you have done? Now you have broken her heart, Mama Orestel said with anger. She took the forty cents from Tfam and held it before him. Take, take it. That's all the money that we have. The man put the 40 cents in his pocket and gave the dress to Tfam. Oh, she was so excited, she dropped her basket and hugged the dress in her arms. Just then, Tfam heard a soft voice. It was Marie. Come see, Victor is here to tell a story. Victor, Tfam trembled. Marie started running toward the large group of children. In front of them, Tfam saw a tall man with a black book under his arm. Mama, she gasped. It's the man who bought my sweet potatoes. He's Victor. Victor began to speak. Tfam put her dress in her basket, and then she covered her ears with her hands. I don't want to listen, Mama. Mama Oristel nodded, but she did not cover her ears. But I will look, said Tfam carefully. I like him a little because he bought my sweet potatoes. Boys and girls, do you think T-Fam could still hear Victor, even though her ears were covered? You can try it yourself right now. Cover your ears and see if you can still hear me speaking. Can you still hear my voice? So you know what? Even though T-Fam had her ears covered, she could still hear the preacher telling the story. Okay, you can take your ears, uh, take your hands <laughs> off your ears now. Don't take your ears off. Just take your hands <laughs> off your ears. <laughs> Well, Tfam could hear the words of the preacher. Many years ago, he said, a wicked king and his people worshipped a false god named Baal. A prophet named Elijah worshipped the true god. Elijah said he would have a contest to show which god was true. Tfam watched Victor put pictures on a large flat board. She wondered what made them stick. Did Victor have magic of his own? She took her hands away from her ears so she could listen more carefully. The preacher went on. The men who served Baal killed a bull and put it on their altar as a gift to their God. There were 450 of these prophets. They were something like witch doctors, said Victor. All day long they called to their God to send fire. They shouted and danced around the altar and even cut themselves. But their God could not hear them. Nothing happened. Lies, whispered Tfam. Then Elijah killed a bull and put it on the, on the other altar. He had some men dig a trench around the altar 
and pour four barrels of water over the offering three times. Even the firewood was soaked. Then Elijah prayed. He asked God to prove himself to be the true God. And suddenly fire came down from heaven and burned up the offering and the wood and the stones, even the water in the trench. Everyone knew that Elijah's God was the true God. He's the one I serve, said Victor. He is all-powerful, and he loves you. Lies, lies, Tifam thought to herself as she clutched her charm, but she saw that her mother was still listening to Victor. Maybe some of you would like to turn from serving your false gods and receive the one true God, the Lord Jesus, as your Savior, if so, come forward and talk to me. Mama Oristil took a step forward. Mama, Tifam burst out in fear. But Mama stood still, looking at the pictures, thinking. Then Mama and Tifam turned and slowly started toward home. I think this victor is right, she said. As soon as they were home, Tifam heard her mother say to her father, Victor's God must be more powerful than your voodoo gods. Enough, Tifam's father shouted. I'll fix that, Victor. He has turned the neighbors and now you against me. I will need something very special to make a charm against this Victor, Papa Oristel thought. Suddenly, he reached into T. Fam's basket. I will take this, he said, pulling out the new dress. Papa, not my new dress, she gasped. As her father entered his voodoo temple, a cold shiver ran through T. Fam. When the witch doctor came out, he held up a rag doll. He had made out of T. Fam's new dress. See, this voodoo doll is Victor and these pins are stuck into his heart. These two nails will fix the spell and make it hold. And this black thread is a warning that Victor will die. Tifam stood still, scarcely daring to breathe. She had never seen her father put a death curse on someone before. <laughs> Couldn't figure out how to turn the turn the camera Hi, around. <laughs> All right. Well, that's part one of the story of T Fam, and we'll find out next week. Does Victor die? Uh, does T Fam get saved? Um, so we'll find out next week. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we hope you have a good night. And we hope we can see you soon. We love you, see you soon. and um, we love you very much. All right. Good night, Bye. everybody.